Welcome to the AN225 Emria, a 275 feet long, 290 feet wide Ukrainian beast that holds four world records and spent her entire life as the largest, heaviest, most capable cargo airplane in history. At least that was before she was destroyed in her home during the 2022 Russian invasion of Ukraine due to her potential strategic use for Ukraine. Now we take a trip back in time to assess the life and death of this Ukrainian super aircraft that could spark the rise of an entirely new class of colossal flying machines powerful enough to carry satellites and shuttles that are en route to space. The Destruction of Emria Emria's flight to her home at the Antonov Airport in Kostomol on February 5th, 2022 would prove to be her last flight as just three weeks after it, Russia would launch its invasion of Ukraine with over 100,000 Russian troops crossing the border to mark the beginning of the greatest European upset since the start of World War II. And Russia had one target in mind from early on, to take over Kyiv, the capital city of Ukraine. To accomplish this, there was the need for a small Russian base in Ukraine that was within a convenient distance from Kyiv, a location with enough land area to contain all Russian equipment, including tanks and jets, that would be moving into Ukraine. The Antonov Airport in Gastamol, where Emria was based, fit the profile perfectly. And so on the morning of February 24th, Russian transport and attack helicopters arrived at the airport in their attempt to capture it. They were, however, met with fierce resistance of Ukrainian troops that preferred the airport remained under Ukrainian control, and so the Battle of Antonov Airport began one that would result in infrastructural damages and impact craters that can be seen from space. After an entire day of exchanging fire and exchanging the control of the airport, the Ukrainians came out on top with a victory that rippled a wave of positive morale across Ukraine. But it quickly became a bittersweet victory, as once the smoke settled, it didn't take an expert's call to realize that the Emria had been shattered back into pre-assembly stages with an airstrike. And by February 26th, the doctor called it. Reports were released to confirm that the world's largest plane had indeed been destroyed on the same land that fostered its development. The Development of the Emria Emria was built by Antonov Serial Production Plant in Soviet Ukraine in the 1980s to help the Soviet space program overcome an obstacle they were facing in the 80s. Their machines, particularly the Burn-class orbiters and the Energia rockets boosters, were simply too big and impossible to transport from where they were manufactured to where they would be launched. Still, they had to be launched and therefore had to be transported to the Baikonur Cosmodrome in modern-day Kazakhstan, thousands of miles away from the nearest seaport, meaning the sea wasn't an option. And after considering oversized highways and scaled-up railroads, the Soviet leaders realized that they weren't in a movie, and the most realistic way to transport this huge hardware and others that may be developed in the future in whatever factory across the Soviet Union was via air transport. And as there was no existing plane in the world that could transport such huge cargo, Soviet Ukraine got to work on developing one, and so the concept of an AN-225 was born. And as the name implies, the AN-225 could carry up to 225 tons of cargo, more than twice the weight of a fully loaded Buran orbiter that was proving too much of a pain to transport. Quickly, the AN-225 reignited the Soviet dream of space domination, earning the plane the name Emria, which is a Ukrainian word for dream, making it the first Soviet aircraft to bear a Ukrainian name. Emria took its first flight in 1988 boasting a maximum takeoff weight of 1.4 million pounds, 166% heavier than the US's closest competition, the Lockheed Martin C-5 Galaxy, which has a maximum takeoff weight of around 840,000 pounds. The Emria is powered by six Progress D-18 turbofans and has a wingspan of 290 feet, far more than that of any aircraft before it. The plane also carries more fuel than 10 Boeing 737s put together, giving it a range of 9,000 to 600 miles, over 1,000 miles farther than the diameter of the Earth, ultimately cementing the plane's stance as a truly intercontinental aircraft. 
The collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991 would, however, threaten to end the career of the Emiria by forcing it to sit dormant for seven years before its use was once again obvious in a world with a rising need to transport the heaviest of cargoes, including giant turbines, entire rail locomotives, mules for an entire army, and up to 8 million face masks from China to Germany in some years to come. Yes, by the 2000s, the need for a plane with such monstrous capacity was undebatable, and so the Emria wasn't only revived and reassembled to contain the parts that had been cannibalized from it during its dormant years, but there was also talks to complete the Emria's twin, known simply as the Emria II, which had been sitting in an Antonov plant outside of Kiev for more than 30 years, with occasional signs of developmental work happening on it. Like the Emria, this second plane, which is 60-70% finished, would have anhedral wings and flight control surfaces controlled via fly-by-wire and triple redundant hydraulics. It is also designed to have an increased capacity landing gear, with 32 wheels, with some of them being steerable, to enable the aircraft to turn within a 200-feet runway before and after being loaded through its kneeling nose gear that allows up to 250 tons of cargo to be more easily moved between the planes and warehouses. And to ensure that the Emria class planes can handle the cargo they're loaded with, their empennage or tail is changed from a single vertical stabilizer, as seen on regular planes, to a twin tail, oversized, swept back horizontal stabilizer. This way, heavy external loads would not be able to disturb the airflow around the tail, which is an edge that the Embria has over its American weight classmates. They are not designed to handle external payloads. However, being military aircraft, they do have the edge of tactical airlifting support and short field operation over the Embria, which is more of a cargo plane than anything else. The Embria II could be different in this regard, though as its unfinished status allows for new features and capabilities to be installed into it, if the $300 million of funding that was requested by Antonov's CEO in 2011 is finally achieved. Capabilities that were inconceivable three decades ago when Emria was developed. But the capabilities that Emria boasted of have still proved more than enough for a successful career. The Success of Emria Emria, the 640-ton resulting aircraft of four years of constant development, was so big that Antonov did not have an appropriate hangar for it, nor an appropriate hangar to even house its parts. So its parts had to be delivered at the right time from when they were manufactured. At its official rollout on November 30th, 1988, the plane was already sticking out of the hangar at the start of the ceremony, as the hangar couldn't completely house it facing forward. 22 days later, on December 21st, Emria will take to the skies for the first time ever at the Gostomel airfield, marking the start of a successful career. Three years after its first flight, Emria would make its inaugural visit to the U.S. on a mission to pick up humanitarian aid for the Chernobyl disaster victims. Then came its dormant seven years before it was refashioned into a commercial carrier of oversized cargo. It became the go-to of Antonov Airlines to transport objects, once thought impossible to move by air. It was at this time that the AN-225 Emria received its type certificate from the Interstate Aviation Committee Aviation Register on May 23, 2001. Being the only member of this type of aircraft, the type's first commercial service happened wherever the Embryo was put to work, which was in 2002 when the plane transported 216,000 prepared meals, weighing 187.5 tons, from Stuttgart, Germany, to Thumrait, Oman, for American military personnel based in the region at the time. Since then, it's been contracted by multiple governments around the world. And in all of these contracts, the Ukrainian aircraft would set world records that no other aircraft in the world has come close to breaking, and become a tourist attraction popular with aviation enthusiasts who rush to catch a glimpse of it at its scheduled arrival and departure airports. But now, it's gone. One of the many casualties of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. But Antonov Airlines has been vocal regarding its destruction, making clear statements that the Emria will rise from its ashes to once again rule the skies as she has done for almost half a century. 
It is unsure if this means the Embrya will be repaired or if she will rise in the chassis of her sister, the Embrya too. The Embrya would likely prefer to be revived, though she would also prefer that you subscribe to this channel and give this video a like if you learned a thing or two. That'll be all for now. Thanks for watching.